Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how you can simulate multivariate normal data using R. Before we get started let me note a couple of things. First we're going to be using three packages. We're going to be using the JWiley MISC package, the MASS package, and then also the Dippler package that you see right here. Now if you're going to be following along with this video presentation and trying to generate your own multivariate normal data, you're going to need to have these packages installed before proceeding. Otherwise, some of the functions that we are going to be using may not be recognized by R and you'll end up with error messages. The second thing that I want to mention too is that underneath the video description you will find a link to this text file uh, that you see opened up on your screen. And this text file actually contains all of the syntax that we will be covering in this video presentation. Uh, additionally, the text file contains three examples. I'm just going to be focusing in on the first of those three in this demonstration. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so for our example, we're going to be simulating data based on a correlation matrix, means, and standard deviations for a set of variables. Uh, and uh, this is based on a presentation by Stage Carter and Nora. In that article, uh, they were demonstrating path analysis and they provided summary information in terms of the correlations, means, and standard deviations for a set of variables. So what we're just going to do is simulate multivariate normal data based on those inputs. So we'll go ahead and scroll down and the first thing that we need to do uh, is to use the library function to call up the JWiley MISC package. Now, I want to mention that um, that we're not going to be actually generating the multivariate data from using this particular package. We're actually going to be generating the data using the mass package. But the mass package relies on a on the input of a covariance matrix. So if you want to if you want to start with a correlation matrix, what we're going to need to do is to convert a correlation matrix into the, into a covariance matrix and then from there we are going to simulate our data. So we're going to be using a function associated with the JWiley MISC package. Uh, that function is the core to cove function, and that requires that we input a correlation matrix and a vector of standard deviations. Now, the uh, correlation matrix, uh, the object containing the correlation matrix, uh, is going to be called V. It's actually a capital V, and the vector of standard deviations, the object is, name, is going to be called sigma. And so you'll, uh, you'll notice too that the uh, sigma starts with a lowercase s. And so we don't want to start it with, a, uh, with an uppercase s uh, for reasons that I'll kind of show you a little bit later on. So the first step, we're going to go ahead and create our correlation matrix. So you can see right here I'm creating an object that is called V. I've got V with an arrow pointing to it. Uh, we have matrix, so we're using the matrix function. Uh, inside the parenthesis, we're, we're going to be using the C function, and, inside, uh, and then we have parenthesis again. And then we enter in the values for the correlation matrix. So these values are uh, those in the upper and the lower diagonal of the covariance matrix. So we're going to be uh, entering a symmetric matrix of correlations. Um, now, you'll notice that each correlation is separated by a comma, um, and then when we get to the end of our correlation matrix, you'll see we have end parenthesis, which basically is closing out uh, this part of our um, uh, code right here. And then you can see we have comma and then 5, comma 5. That's referring to the dimensionality of the correlation matrix. Basically, uh, we have five rows and five columns. Uh, and then we end with our parenthesis here, which closes out uh, all of this uh, portion of our uh, code. Now, I will say this too: that uh, we can, uh, you can see that it, it would be very easy to make errors when you are uh, typing in those values. So another way that we could uh, type in our correlation matrix is uh, in this kind of way right here, where I'm, I'm using the, again the matrix function (parenthesis C function parenthesis), and you can see right here that I'm entering and all the values, basically each row of the correlation matrix separately. Again, all of those are separated by commas. We, uh, we uh, uh, round out our uh, C function uh, by uh, incorporating our end parenthesis here. Then I've got comma, then uh, 5 comma 5 end parenthesis. The 5 comma 5 again is representing the dimensionality of our correlation matrix. So what we'll go ahead and do, uh, I'll open up R right here. I'll type in our library function 
uh, or use the library function to call up our package, the JWiley MISC package, and uh, that gets activated right there. Uh, I'll also, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this uh, code right here and paste it in uh, in order to, and then hit enter right here. And if I type in uh, our capital V, you can see that we have our correlation matrix that is given right there. Uh, next, we will create an object that's called sigma. And you can see, uh, again, we're pointing to sigma and we're using the C function. And these are the standard deviations for each of our variables. And make sure that these are entered in the same order as the variables appear in the, the uh, variance code, the, uh, excuse me, the correlation matrix. So we'll go ahead and just uh, copy this and paste it in to R as well the console and hit enter and then if I type in Sigma you can see that we have our vector of um, standard deviations okay so the next step is we're going to be using the core to cove function in order to convert the correlation matrix into a matrix of uh, variances and covariances so you'll see that with this function we're going to be type we have inside our parenthesis um, our V which is uh, representing the correlation matrix and then we have our sigma which is representing our um, vector of standard deviations and you'll notice that I'm using this I'm going to save that information uh, that co uh, variance covariance matrix in uh, into an object that is called Sigma with a capital S right there and the reason why this is important is because when we use the mass package down here uh, we actually have to have um, sigma that's given right here you'll see uh, for instance when we're generating our multivariate normal data there's a sigma that's given right there so let's go ahead and just uh, create our uh, variance covariance matrix using that core to cove function so I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and I'll paste this into R and then uh, hit enter and just to show you what the uh, covariance matrix looks like we'll type in sigma and you can see this is what it's going to look like there Next, we're going to use the mass, uh, uh, the functions uh, associated with the mass package in order to generate our multivariate normal data. So we need to call up that package. So we're just going to type in uh, library and then inside parenthesis mass and hit enter. And so now that package is uh, activated. And now we can use the uh, MVR norm function that's associated with that package in order to generate our data. So what we also need to do uh, is have a vector of means for the variables. So you can see right here that I'm creating a, an object that's called mu. And you can see that we're using the C function again. And we're typing in the means for each of our five variables um, that's uh, based on that article. Again, uh, these means need to appear in the order in which uh, they appeared in our uh, in our vector of standard deviations and uh, as they appeared in, in terms of the order in which they, they occur in the uh, correlation matrix. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and copy this and I'm just going to paste this again into R, hit enter, and if we type in mu right here you can see we have our uh, means for our variables. So now we have everything that we need in order to generate uh, our data. So you can see right next what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object It's just going to be called D. Uh, you can see that I'm also uh, making sure that this is a data frame and inside our parenthesis you can see that I've got MV norm. Alright so that's the function that's associated with the mass package the n equals, this is going to be our sample size, or, or basically our um, the size of our data set. Um, then we have comma, then we have mu, so that's our vector of means. Then we have sigma, which is our uh, covariance matrix. Then comma, and then 5, comma 5, that is for the dimensionality um, for our, um, our covariance matrix. And you'll notice that uh, basically we have... Um, you know this uh, parenthesis right here which is closing out this section of uh, for our code and then we also have this other parenthesis which is closing out uh, this portion from our code so now what we'll do is uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it in and hit enter and so now uh, if we uh, type in D for instance you'll see that we have um, 3747 uh, cases in our data set so 
our data has been simulated. You can see if, if we scroll to the top right here, you can see we've got X1, X2, X3, X4, and X5. So we have our five variables in here with the data for, e for each of those variables. Now obviously we don't want to leave those variable names as X1, X2, X3, X4, and X5. Um, so what we can do is we can use the rename function that's associated with the Dippler package uh, that you see right here. So our next step is to uh, use the library function and call up that package. So I'll just go ahead and copy this and paste it in and hit enter. So that now that package is ready to go and we'll use the rename function. So what you can see right here on the next line, I'm essentially uh, renaming the variables in the our data set, which I'm just calling it D. Um, and so you can see right here, I'm using the rename function right here. Uh, you can see inside the parenthesis we have the name of our data frame, which is D. And currently, uh, again, the variables are named X1 through X5. So we follow that with a uh, comma. Then we have, then we're going to give a name for each variable. So we're going to say uh, uh, X1. We're going to rename that into FamComp right here. So you can see that we have FamComp equals X1. Then SES equals X2. Math achievement right here is X3, math uh, attitudes is X4, and then this challenge variable right here is going to be X5. So if we uh, copy this, and uh, we'll just go ahead and paste this in again and hit enter, and uh, I'll just go ahead and use the structure function in order just to take a quick look at the um, at, at our data frame, and you can see that we have our variable names that are given. So there's FamComp, there's SES, Math Achievement, Math Attitudes, and then uh, Challenge that's given right there. So basically that's all there is to it. Um, again, if you'll uh, download that text file, you can study it. There are two additional examples that are provided um, for uh, so you can uh, kind of study up on those as well. So that uh, concludes this video demonstration, and I appreciate you watching.